Okay, well, good morning. It's good to have you here in Vail with us. It's good to have you on the computer screen. It's great to have those of you who are going to be watching with us virtually at your convenience here sometime this week. Welcome to the Vail Chapel and to worship with us. Let's pray together as we begin our time today. Heavenly Father, for the blessings of this day, for the occasion of your people gathering in worship, for celebrating our Lord and Savior, for being thankful that nothing separates us from the love of God. Our hearts are overwhelmed this morning with gratitude, with love, and with peace. And we pray that in this time of worship that you would suit a special blessing to each one here, those physically present, those who are virtually joining with us. Lord, you know the conditions of each of our heart, regardless of where we may be or what we're going through. We pray a special touch on each one today. Bless this time. May it encourage your people. And may above all, may it lift up the name of our Lord and Savior. And we ask this blessing upon each one in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, it is good to have you. And uh, just for the sake of doing this, I'm going to leave her sound on in case something happens and she says something. Um, we may hear other people here with us today. Yeah. And did y'all get one of the sheets? Did y'all get the, the worship guide? Yeah. Okay. Did you get the hymn book? Yes. Okay. Well, go ahead and turn with me to number 61, our responsive reading this morning. I'm going to read the worship leader part, and I'm also going to join you on the everyone part just because it helps project on here better for the recording for those who are reading along with us. We're talking, bless the Lord your God. Number 61, stand up and bless the Lord your God forever and forever. Blessed be your glorious name, which is exalted above all blessings and praise. You alone are the Lord. You have made heaven and earth. With all the hosts, the earth with everything in it, the seas with all that is in them, and you preserve them all, the host of heaven worships you. Join with me on this last part. Blessed be your glorious name, which is exalted above all blessings and praise. We are going to go again to our Lord in prayer this morning. Be praying especially for Susanna this day. Susan, for your family, to watch, care, and peace over them. We will close by saying the Lord's Prayer together, so feel free to join with us at that time. But bow with me again as we approach the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, this day, your people join together in worship. And here in Vail, it's part of that seasonal change of life. The mountains closed, fewer people are in our town right now and we begin to prepare for summer. Yet this day is no different than any other. For it is a day that the Lord has made and we rejoice and we're glad in this time. And for the privilege of worship, we give you praise and thanksgiving and ask that you are present here among us. Let your people hear and experience your touch. Draw our heads and hearts heavenward in worship. Encourage us with the truth of your word. Bless us with the gift of fellowship this day. And let this time be pleasing for you and let your people celebrate wherever we might be. We do pray that you keep us mindful for so many. There are so, still so many who are hurting, who are suffering with sickness and illness and injury. And we do continue to pray for those who are hurting at this time and pray that your healing hand would be upon them. We pray for those going through times of grief and despair. We continue to pray for the Bonnet family that you would ease their grief and pain and hold them close in these days. 
Lord, we pray a special prayer this morning for Susanna. In the darkness of life, in the time of despair, Lord, I pray that you would hold her close right now and let her experience a gift of grace that might be uncommon for her. Lord, let her feel your touch. Let her know that you are there with her in the midst of this time. Surround her now with your angels, with family, with friends. And Lord, let her life and heart be encouraged rather than being in despair. Above all, Lord Jesus, we pray for a spiritual healing to continue in each of our lives, in our country, around our world. Let us be made more into your image and let our lives reflect you in the places that we live. This morning as we look into your word, we see how we are the body of Christ. Hands, feet, eyes, ears. Lord, we each have a place, a calling and a purpose. Let us fulfill those purposes well that our lives might bring glory to you. So again, we pray that you bless your people in worship. And now let us join our voices together and let us pray the way the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot, but did you watch virtually last week when we talked about the fourfold purpose of the church? Yes. Okay. We well, got to get a little warm up then going into the sermon because based on the number of views we had last week, a lot of people missed that sermon. <laughs> but when we see how God brought us all together, we've been celebrating Easter. We've been celebrating this year. We see how Christ came in called Peter back into ministry. He preached that great sermon on Pentecost. And, it's, and we saw two, last Sunday that 3,000 people heard that sermon and responded and accepted Christ into their hearts and lives. 3,000 people, starting with a group of about 10 or 12. And, they, and when we see the purpose of the church outlined very clearly in Acts, and they continued every day in the apostles' teaching, Having all things in common, they celebrated communion, community, fellowship together. They broke bread. They ate. And, of course, they prayed. And those four purposes are a part of who we are today, even in times of worship. We look into God's word for instruction. We commune with our hearts and our spirits towards each other. It builds our relationships I'm looking forward to the day we share meals again together with people more openly. Um, as y'all know, our son down in Denver uh, is a chef, and he was saying while they were gone, restaurant week starts today down in Denver. There are no restrictions in Denver on attendance right now. And the restaurants are pretty happy about that from a financial point of view. But I think families are pretty excited about that as well. Just to be able to, that was one of the great times this past week. You know, y'all, everybody knows we were in Mexico with the kids and their wives. We ate almost every meal together. And we shared food from plates. I mean, somebody's, what's that? So we're eating off each. We had the best time down there, but it was just being together. And then, of course, that calling that God gives us for prayer. As the church continued to grow after Pentecost, Paul began to teach in the, in the uh, Gentile areas more frequently because in Israel, there was a lot of similarities between the synagogue and the church. They were very similar in how they had functioned. 
the reading of scripture, the call to prayer, some of the songs that they sang. But in the Gentile world, this was very brand new to everybody. What do we do in this time? And everybody continued in teaching. And in Corinth, one of the bigger cities in that day and time, they were a lot like, I'm going to say, society is today. Corinth found a way to mess up anything they could. If it was good, let's go into an abundance. And now, oh gosh, there's even one time when they're saying, Paul's talking to him, he goes, let me tell you about when you have communion in a church service. You're supposed to get bread and you're supposed to get the cup. You're not supposed to cut in line. Some people are cutting in line. Some people get up to the front first and drink all the wine and become drunk at church. Don't do it. Some of you come in and eat all the bread and others are left with nothing. He goes, don't you have homes to eat and drink in that way? When we come together, we're celebrating Christ. It's not trying to get as much as we can. And one of the things that the church in Corinth struggled with was the gift, if you can call it that, of comparison. Who was better than who? Who was more spiritual? And they struggled with that, especially in the realm of spiritual gifts. Because God's told us he's gifted every one of us specifically in some way. Some are pastors and teachers. Some are not. Some are um, administrators. Some have gifts of, of teaching. Some have gifts of hospitality. Some have gifts of so many different things. The Bible talks about all the ways God gifts us. And some of those gifts are our natural abilities tuned to give glory to God. And some of those abilities are special anointings at times in our life or maybe a calling in our life that we fulfill. Um, there are some people, one of the gifts specifically mentioned is hospitality. There's some people who just thrive on being hospitable. And you can just see it. They enjoy every avenue of that in such a powerful way. So everybody's trying to exercise their spiritual gifts. Everybody's trying to grow in Christ the way he's calling us to. And then they begin thinking, Paul's doing a better job than Tim is. We should listen to what Paul has to say. Lane, Susan's doing it better than you are. You need to look at Susan. So then they began having sides. This was the more spiritual side, the less spiritual side, and arguments began to break out over who was the most spiritual. So Paul had to do a lot of teaching there, and he goes, let me tell you something about spiritual gifts. The most important thing you need to know is God has called us into the body of Christ. The body is a single unit. Chapter 12, verse 12 of 1 Corinthians. The body is a single unit, though it has many parts. And though all its parts are many, they make up one body. And so it is with Christ. We've all been baptized by one spirit into one body, whether we are Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we can put any disclension up there. This color or that color, this ethnicity, that ethnicity, this background, this background, all are given one spirit to drink. We're all called to be in common that way. And the body is not made up of one part, but many. We're diverse. If the foot should say, because I am not the hand, I don't belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease to be a part of the body. Now, that's a very vivid illustration. Imagine the human body arguing with itself. And the foot saying, I'm not like the hand. And the hand saying, well, I can't walk. And, and we realize how ridiculous this thought is. Yet at the same time, in the body of Christ, those same things happen. I have this gift. I have this gift. I'm more important. No, no, we're all part of one body. I'm going to guess most people, at some point in your life, you've experienced a hangnail. At some point. Maybe it's a small paper cut on the end of your finger. Anytime I ever have a hangnail or a paper cut, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to accidentally hit my hand on the piano, on a desk or something, and it's going to shake. We see when the smallest part of our body hurts, the entire body hurts. When all is functioning together, everything is good. 
Because I'm not the eye, do I not belong to the body? No. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just the way he wanted to. If they were all one part, where would the body be? So there are many parts, but one body. And God has combined the members of the one body and has given, given greater honor to the parts that lacked it so that there would be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. For if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. And then he has this final statement. You are the body of Christ. This time of year, there are not as many body parts of the body of Christ present in the Vale or the Beaver Creek chapels. They go to different locations this time of year. That does not diminish the significance of who we are or our callings in life. It's a season of existence. We are still part of the body of Christ and each of us is called to live up to our purposes in the fullest capacity that we can. There are some who appointed apostles, some are prophets, some are teachers and workers of miracles. Some have gifts of healing. And there's others who have gifts of administration. Some speak in different tongues. Are all these people apostles? No. Are they all prophets? No. Do they all do miracles or have gifts of healing? No. Do all interpret. All the gifts come together. This is so important for each of us to know whether you're in a foreign country, a different continent, whether you're sitting in Florida or actually present here in the Vale Chapel. We all come together. We have this cohesiveness that God has placed us here exactly the way he wants us to be. By design and with intentionality. Because God does not make mistakes. One of my favorite stories years and years ago was the story of a census taker who was working in some of the ghetto areas of New Orleans. And this man went to this one house and he knocked on the door and this rather large lady came to the door and the, and the man explained, I am from the census company. How many people live in this house? She goes, well, let me see. There's me. My name's Sheila. And my husband lives here. His name's Tom. And we got three boys. Jimmy, Nathan, and Jacob. And we got, she, he goes, no, stop. How many people live here? He goes, well, excuse me. I'm trying to tell you. There's me. My name's Sheila. And my husband, his name is Tom, and he lives here. And we got three boys. And she starts going through the names. And she gets to the girls' names, and she's going through that. And we've got some grandchildren that live here. Stop. I just need to know how many people live here. And she goes, I'm telling you, how many people live here? Listen. And finally goes, you're not getting it. I've got a piece of paper right here. I've got to write a number down. How many people live in this house? I need to know the number. She goes, zero. Not a single number lives in this house. We're all people. We've all got names, and God loves every one of us. Very few things have ever been spoken that are truer than that statement that a census taker didn't know what to do with. We've all got names. God made us all, and he made us this way on purpose. He put us in the body of Christ for this reason. And he's gifted us, and he's equipped us. And there's a verse at the end of chapter 12 in 1 Corinthians that we don't usually focus on this much because it's, one, it's kind of a segue into the next chapter. It says, and now I will show you the most excellent way. What we hear... This is the Bible saying, this is how God has put us together. But now I'm going to give you the most excellent understanding of this whole idea. He saved the best for last. 
This is where we get 1 Corinthians chapter 13, commonly referred to as the love chapter. Or brides who call me up about weddings and say they want that love thing in the wedding. This is what they're talking about. It's the most excellent way. It is the part that makes everything make sense and brings everything into function. And it tells us we can speak with the tongues of angels. We can speak eloquently. We can say every consonant correctly and get all the punctuation in place. But if we don't have love, our speech is never understood. It's like a clanging cymbal or a gong. It said, we can do great things. We can give money to the poor. We could even be a martyr. We could give up our life for Christ. In that day and time, it was much more common than it is in this day and time. We could do all those things. But you know what? If there's not love in the heart, it doesn't matter. The most excellent way of the body to flow and function together is to be bathed, anointed, and surrounded in the understanding of love for each other. Jesus taught so much about love. There's so much understanding in the scripture, but here we see this is what makes the body excellent. That we love each other. That we have compassion. That we have concern. That we pray when someone's hurting. That we meet the needs of people who are without. It calls us to love as we are told. I have to keep reading because... One of my favorite parts of chapter 13. This is the part the brides like the best too, I have to say. Love is patient. Why did he have to use patience first? You know, love is patient. Love is kind. It is not envious. It doesn't boast. It's not proud. It's not rude, self-seeking. It is not easily angered. Love does not, de does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. The greatest source of influence, motivation, and encouragement there is, even to this day, is love. That attitude of our life, that action of our heart that says, I care about you right where you are. And we're not perfect yet. We're going to be patient and give you room to grow. And in the midst of that, we're going to protect when we fall short. We're going to trust when we don't always see those end results. We're going to hope and pray that God's not finished with us yet. And we're going to persevere as the body of Christ because love never fails. This is the most excellent way. We talk about the fourfold purpose of the church just last week. Paying attention to the apostles' teaching, the truth of God's word, we got to have God's word living in our hearts and lives. The communion that we enjoy together, having things in common, this strengthens who we are as people. Eating together, having that fellowship of, allows lives to grow and develop. And prayer, all of these things work together for the purpose of the church. We can get the functions right. We can get the things in order. We can be a body doing the right things at the right time. But please hear this, if we're not loving each other, it doesn't make a difference. We had a very special occasion that took place on Friday night when we were down in Mexico. And I thought about this in preparation. Um, at the French restaurant, we thought we were gonna do one of the seaside dinners out on the, on the beach. There were three weddings going on and all the tables were taken at the beach. So I'm going up to the front desk and saying, we're just not going to be able to do it. The Salmonier 
and head chef from the French restaurant came out and came to me and they said, Senor, we understand you're looking for something special for your family. I would like to bring you to our wine cellar and show you what I would like to offer you. And as I sat down with Armando and we began to talk about a menu, he asked about the personality of our kids. And when you're talking to a chef and a salmonier, it's kind of easy when you say, our oldest son is a chef. He knows a lot of what you do. Our youngest son, he does this. He's in sales. Here's their strengths. Here's what they like. What foods do they enjoy? I can tell them what they like. And their wives are with them. Tell me about their wives. So I told them about Alex. I told them about Alicia. I told him about Sharice. I said, here's what we're going to do. This is our last night together as a family. And he goes, E familia, my familia, please allow me to serve you. I know Lane got some of the pictures from that night. It was seven courses. And Keelan, our youngest son, really loves escargot, so they brought that one out as the second course. And after it was all gone, he goes, can I have some more? See, sí, see, sí. and out some more came. And if you ate all of it, they'd bring more out. If you did, Well, we liked everything, so we just kept eating everything they brought out. And after two and a half hours, we're sitting there and going, what a beautiful way to end the time together. And it was because someone that I just met the day before when he goes, E familia, my familia. I'm sure we could find things we could disagree on, but I knew at that moment he cared about me and my family. And because of that, we had a great time. This is how God desires to encourage us. We are part of the body of Christ. E familia, my familia. Let's concentrate on the teachings of Scripture. Let's have communion as we can. Let's eat together, drink together, pray together, exercise our spiritual gifts together, and never forget that love is what makes it worth it all. Love never fails. And that is the excellent way of the body of Christ. Pray with me today. Heavenly Father, you have called us into your family. You've called us into your family as the body of Christ. And we function as individual congregations and churches around this world. And Lord, you know, sometimes we mess up. Sometimes we're not about the right things. Sometimes we're distracted. Lord, today I would pray that those distractions would pass away, that we would see more than anything else that call to love each other just as Christ has loved us. Because there we find meaning, we find purpose, we find significance. Lord, thank you for forgiving us when we fail. Loving us when we're not quite there. Being patient. And knowing that it's the love of Christ that will perfect our hearts and lives, not only now, but for all eternity. Until we join together in that great celebration banquet at the table feast before the Lamb. Lord Jesus, you are making that possible in each of our lives, and we thank you for that today. Bless your people and our walk with you. We ask in your holy name. <clears throat> Amen. Okay, so uh, that's kind of it for today. Um, Everybody's going to head for the back door. Don't run into anybody walking out here. Let's keep our distance from each other. On the computer, you can just click that off. Those of you who are watching, I don't even think this one's too long this morning. You may not have had to shut it off two or three times to get another cup of coffee. But if you did, that's okay, too. Um, we will see everybody in person when we can.
Have a wonderful and blessed week. Leave those right there. I pray now that our God will bless you and keep you. And I pray that he'll make his face to smile upon you. I pray that he directs our paths unto his righteousness for his honor and glory. And I pray that we go from here today being guided by his Holy Spirit <clears throat> and living a life characterized by his love for others, for ourselves, for the church, for those who are in need. Go now in the peace of Christ. I pray this blessing upon you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Go in the peace of Christ, and thanks again for being with us today.